Welcome to Live Life on Purpose with Jose Feliciano from Feliciano Financial Group. In this podcast, Jose explains that money is just a tool to achieve the things you want in life, a tool to make the decision to live life on purpose. He draws from years of experience to demonstrate that when your money aligns with your goals, you can live a purposeful life. Because when your vision is clear, your decision is easy. Hello and welcome to Live Life on Purpose with Jose Feliciano. Good morning, Jose. How are you? Doing wonderful. How are you today? Oh, I'm fantastic. I've had lots of coffee. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I'm ready to go. I am ready. I'm really excited. Uh, For you, the listening audience, this is... Jose's inaugural podcast. That means it's his very first one. And you get an opportunity to to know Jose and his team a little bit more, what makes him tick, uh, personal information about him. We'll get, we're going to get into that in about the second half of the podcast. The first half is really about business. Uh, Jose, are you ready? I'm ready when you All are. All right, let's do this. All right. So first question, why did you decide to work in financial services, Jose? Well, you know, it really started way back in 1982. I was actually started off in the health insurance business, and I was representing just one company. And every time I saw somebody, I knew that there was another company better for them. Somebody would have Mm -hmm. a pre-existing condition like high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, those things. So I ended up representing 100 different health insurance companies. And then that evolved into 1986, 1987. Somebody asked me about life insurance, so I represented all the life insurance companies. About 89 uh, somebody asked me about mutual funds, so I went ahead and got into the financial services industry as far as retirement plans and so forth. And in 1993, I became a C- CFP, which is a certified financial planner. Mm-hmm. And I realized everybody in this industry was really reactive instead of proactive. So we ended up through the years, we saw the needs of tax planning, insurance planning, investment planning, retirement planning, cash flow budgeting, business planning, and estate planning. We realized over the years that most consumers have a hodgepodge full of stuff that they've accumulated over the years, and they end up with a mind-blowing number of relationships advising them. And the problem is that all the professionals don't talk to each other. And so what we've done is we have uh, have all these deliverables under one roof, and in that way, we can get what needs to get done done. Mm. Yeah, that's... I love the fact that you, you're you basically pointing to growth, right? At every turn, you took an opportunity to grow, not just your business, but your your wisdom and the things that you knew and the things that you were able to incorporate for your clients. I, I think that that's absolutely fantastic. So speaking about your clients, who do you work with and really what's your specialty? Well, you know, I, I, we really like to work with people that enjoys life, that's uh, charitably inclined. And they value our opinion and experience. Mm-hmm. They got a sense of humor. You know, we work best with people that, you know, have the tax issues and, and insurance issues. And Actually, we answer four questions in the financial services areas. Number one is what cash reserves you should have or how to get it there. Mm-hmm. Number two, what's the best way to reduce debt based on your needs? And then number three, uh, we answer th- three questions in the insurance areas. Number one is should you have it at all? And if you should have some, uh, what's the right kind and what's the right amount? Mm-hmm. And then number four just to allocate assets that gives us the highest probability of achieving your goals. Fantastic. Now, you, you already answered my next question pretty much. I was going to ask, what do you do for your clients? But it, it sounds like you really help them build an entire plan. Is that about right? Yeah. I th- you know, w- you know, we believe that, that every decision you make with money impacts something else. And that's why we have to look at the taxes. You know, reducing taxes accumulates towards wealth. And, you know, what if you don't make it? Uh, you need to be properly insured to make sure that self-completing. And uh, if you do make it, you want to make sure that you can eliminate or reduce as much risk as possible. Um, and we always, you know, people always say, what's your number? Well, it depends what you're trying to accomplish. And we do find that a lot of people take too much risk that they need to mm-hmm. uh, based on where they want to go. All right. If you had to paint me a picture, Jose, of your ideal client, who would that be? It would be somebody that's... Uh, uh, that believes in family, uh, that really want to take care of their uh, people that they care about, that's charitably inclined, that's really involved in the community. People that just worked hard and just mm-hmm. want to be in a position that we want to avoid going backwards. And they really want to be organized and they want to be efficient. And anytime you're organized, you f- you, you're in more control. And the more you're in control is what gives you the confidence to move forward to live life on purpose. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you find these new clients? Uh, it's always referrals. I mean, it's a people refer their friends. We've been blessed and been in business for 
35 years and mm -hmm. we've got clients for, it's been with us at the be very beginning. It's very rewarding because you get to work with the next generation and the people that they work with. And we have a lot of raving fans and we have a lot of workshops and a lot of events because we, we put on events for, events for three reasons. Number one is we want people to get to know each other. People are retired and they still want to grow and live life on purpose. So we always want our folks to all meet each other. And number two, we want them to get to know our staff on a personal uh, basis besides just business. And then number three, you know, they've got friends and family and people they care about that they would like to introduce us to, but we just wanted to create an environment that people don't feel like that they have to come in to meet us. Mm -hmm. Again, you're, you're way ahead of me in this, in this, uh, <laughs> for my questions, I was going to ask what kind of client education you do. And I, I know that's part of what you're bringing this podcast to the, to the airwaves is for is, is some education and not just for clients, for anybody who's listening, but what kind of education do you do, uh, beyond what you've already explained? Well, we've had uh, workshops where social security will have uh, somebody from the social security office come in and there's a lot of questions in that regard. Uh, there's also, uh, we have workshops for uh, Medicaid planning because mm -hmm. uh, people want to protect their assets in the event of somebody going and needing some type of long-term care and they can't get it. So they don't want to spend yeah. down their assets. So w what, what are you entitled to, to protect your assets? And then of course, uh, investments, common mistakes that people make in investments. Uh, we've had, uh, workshops in estate planning, uh, how to pass down, uh, what's important to you, what you accumulated onto the next generation, but not really spoil the next generation. People, you know, want to put in an incentive trust or anything that's really important to you. We can, we can design it out. And then uh, in the areas of tax planning. So we try to co cover common mistakes that people make in all areas of planning, whether it is taxes or retirement or insurance or investments, cash flow budgeting. And, you know, cash flow is really the most important thing to a financial plan is what your lifestyle is and what you need to have to live life on purpose. So we really like to educate people just to avoid the common mistakes that are out there. Yeah, absolutely. One thing that I've noticed during this, just this, these brief few minutes on this podcast so far, Jose, is that you say we continually. Uh, you haven't said I, and I, I love that because I personally know that you've got uh, a team behind you. And so I want to ask you, who's on your team and what do they do? Well, team is very important because there's no way you can be jack of all trades, master of none. Mm -hmm. We have a, a team of teams approach here in the office, and I, I kind of like to relate it to a house when your visions are clear, your decisions are easy. So the first step to build a new house, you have to have the vision of the house that you want, mm -hmm. which to me describes your life or your business or, or an organ, a nonprofit organization. And then what do you do? The, the next step is you have a general contractor and there's several of us that play the role of a general contractor. And what we do is we have the painters and plumbers and roofers, and electricians all working under one roof to get what needs to get done, done. Uh, based on what the client wants to accomplish. To add to that, I mean, we have CFPs in the office, CLU, CHFCs. We have a, you know an attorney that works with us in the office, and we wow. have a, a CPA, a tax planning person, uh, a Medicare supplement. Uh, somebody needs Part D and want to save money on on their prescription drugs. Uh, of course, anytime we can save money in any area uh, goes to your wealth and the things that are important to you. So, we have a team of teams that works together. Um, I think that's so important, great communication, and it's efficient for the clients because the clients don't have to pay the overhead of eight different professionals. Mm -hmm. They only have to uh, have one group to work with, and it's efficient, and people, it saves them time, energy, money, and effort, and uh, they really organize and simplify the process uh, that they can really go and have the confidence to enjoy life and live life on purpose. Yeah, that's great. I, I'm hoping that maybe we can get a couple of those team members to come on as guests in the future. Is that okay with you? Oh, there's no doubt about it. I'll have each, uh, I'll have a podcast where what's our philosophy behind that. And, mm -hmm. and then we'll also have the Medicare SUP that open enrollment's coming up, you know, with the gotcha. uh, pretty soon the next quarter and then health insurance and tax planning. And we'll get into all areas as we move forward. All right. Great. Jose, what do you do in the community? I tell you what, I think Tyler, Texas is one of the best places in the world. Uh, I used to be on a school board here in the 90s, and uh, we're involved with the American Heart Association as a chairman in the last couple of years. Uh, nice. We're involved in a little bit of everything, uh, coaching football, Little League baseball. Uh, we're really involved 
uh, some of our employees here and the people that work with, they coach the league baseball and football and everybody's just involved in their family's lives. Family is very important to us. Uh, but, you know, I'm the uh, eldest of five children, uh, born to an immigrant Puerto Rican father and a French Irish mother who are both mm. deaf mutes. And I talk sign languages faster than I could speak. And so we, we're kind of a we're bottom line firm. We, when we do sign language and we talk to our parents, it's I eat, I store, I play, I crazy. So we get to the bottom line first. There's a lot of clients. There's a lot of different types of clients. People want more detail and we get mm -hmm. into it. But I think that we just, we get to the bottom line very, uh, and I think people really appreciate that. And um, yeah, I hope I answered your question. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now you mentioned the CFP earlier, so I'm going to take just a moment. Uh, for you, the listening audience, I'm going to give you a website that you can go to if you want to learn some of the vernacular and, and some of the terms that we'll be using on the podcast. Now, Jose, I know that you will be educating people on those terms. I'll even ask you and prompt you for some of you know what those terms mean. But I do want to give you the website Investopedia, if you're listening to this. Investopedia is a wonderful place to go just to kind of understand things more. First thing you need to look up is the CFP. Now, Jose said he has that designation, and I say that on purpose because of the fact that the CFP is one of the hardest and most rigorous designations a financial advisor can get uh, and, and work toward. It, it is tough. And Investopedia will tell you that. I mean, they, they have all the designations and it'll, it'll tell you that it is one of the toughest. So uh, that's for the audience. Now, Jose, for you, what designations or advanced education do you have besides the CFP? Well, we're certified financial planner. When I say we, me personally, uh, CFP, uh, CLU, uh, CHFC, which is a Chartered Financial Consultant, and then the LUTCF, which is a Life Underwriters Training Council. And it's important on the designations because we continue to keep learning. We know we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. uh, we're learning every day. And as we're learning, we're, everything is to add value. And I think you add value for the rest of our lives. So uh, we always want to become better. And our, our job is to help people make smart choices with their money. But tax laws change, insurance mm -hmm, changes, mm -hmm. investments changes, and so, so we really have to stay on top of that. Yeah, definitely. All right, we're at our last question for the first section about your kind of your business history. Jose, what is your financial philosophy? Uh, my financial philosophy is is really asset allocation. I think um, not buy, not looking for the needle in the haystack, owning mm -hmm. the haystack. I always tell people we can't make you rich, but we can prevent you from being poor. And I think that's so important. Yeah. And uh, we're not trying to hit a home run. We just want to uh, have good, steady growth, plan ahead, make sure the emergency funds are in place because we're going to have times. The thing that concerned me the most is, you know, a Twin Towers or anthrax or something like that. But now with this pandemic, you know, who would ever thought that the whole world would – shut down. Mm -hmm. But when you plan ahead and have a good reserve, you know that there are going to be dips in the marketplace that we can't control. And I think that we just have to be proactive in our planning. Yeah, that's that's fantastic advice, fantastic philosophy. Um, yeah, I mean, COVID, who knew, right? I mean, it's it's black swan event is what they call it. And this black swan is it's the biggest swan I've ever seen, Jose. <laughs> this thing is yeah. huge. So yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's definitely something that uh, I, I'm happy to hear that that's what your philosophy is, because that I think that brings a lot of peace of mind to your clients, and at least in my opinion, it would. All right, let's switch gears. Let's get a little personal. Is that okay? Yeah, fine. All right. So when you're not working, what do you do for fun? I enjoy playing golf. I enjoy putting on events. Uh, getting people together makes me happy, and I'm kind of a needy guy. I like to be around quite a bit of people. And, nice. Um, I enjoy the relationship side of this business and and, and everything, so... Uh, and for fun, that would be that would probably be it. A little bit, a little bit of golf, and and of course sporting events. I, mm -hmm. I never wanted to grow up. I'm 18 years old with so many years of experience. So <laughs> I love. I went to my 40th. Uh, this actually this year would have been my 40th opening day Rangers baseball. So I haven't missed in 39 years since I was 18. Wow. And uh, so I do. I love to go to sporting events, uh, Dallas Cowboy games, and hockey, of course. And so any sporting events. Uh, I really enjoy. That's fantastic. My wife is a huge Cowboys fan. Um, I'm from Seattle, so the Seahawks are my team, but you and I can still talk football, I'm sure. <laughs> we'll have lots yeah, to talk no. about coming, working our way forward. All right, who is your hero? 
I would say my hero, of course, my father's my hero, being deaf and and watching him, uh, he taught me the most powerful lessons of my life is mm. don't worry about what everybody else thinks, just be, just be the best version of yourself you can be. And watching him uh, being deaf and, and going through life and just being the best version of himself has really gave me confidence that, uh, you know, I was in a, in a situation where I had to be legal guardians of my little brother and little sister. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a whole story behind that. But I would have to say that's my hero because watching both my parents overcome obstacles on a daily basis that we all take for granted and watching them deal with life and the things that they taught me. I always had family, relationships, love. They taught me to be kind, considerate, and caring. And I think that the most important thing that they taught me was to stop worrying about what everybody else thinks and just be the best version of yourself. Fantastic advice. All right. If you had all the money you ever needed, in other words, tomorrow morning you wake up and you know your bank account says a trillion bucks, <laughs> what would you do? Well, you know, it's funny. I ask the clients the same question. And uh, I think that the hierarchy of needs in life, you know, when I do ask what's important about money to you, I hear freedom, independence, buying stuff and things or vacations and so mm -hmm. forth. But when I do ask that same question, uh, it, it's always about helping and serving others. You know, if you had all the money in the world, you want to be able to help and assist others. Yeah. Being involved in the community, being involved with the colleges here and the, the kids that, that you know, want to play football, baseball. We sponsor a lot of events and sponsor a lot of charities. Very important to us. And I think that's that's the purpose of life. And I think mm -hmm. uh, being able to help others and serve others. And I, I, one thing that we have found that I believe and we try to um, encourage others is that, you know, sometimes it doesn't take all the money in the world to do the things and enjoy the journey. Uh, you can help and serve others. And it doesn't take money to do that, to be involved with church and be involved with family and and. Ch uh, charitable events, mm -hmm. you could do that now. And if you do that now and living life on purpose while you're accumulating, uh, I think that that's, uh, that's really important. Yeah, absolutely. What is your idea of success, Jose? Success to me is a, uh, have a great relationship with my wife, um, great relationship with my family, um, respect and honor my parents, um, respect and honor people's opinions, I think that what I've learned over the years is that words and symbols are interpretive based on life experiences and everybody's word that we use are a symbol uh, and, it, and it doesn't mean the same thing to different people. So um, I think success to me is just to understand others, learn from others, uh, feed back to them what I heard to make sure we have clear communication. I ask the same thing. What did you hear? What I just, what I found through the years that as a professional, what we hear and say isn't always interpreted the way it was intended. Mm -hmm. And and more importantly, what we hear is what's not being said. So I think that uh, really understanding where people are coming from, you can really learn a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Well, say, what is one thing that you recommend most to clients, family, or friends? And it could be anything. We're talking pizza, books, movies, whatever. I recommend, I, you know, I... I I love the Rich Dad, Poor Dad uh, mm -hmm. from Robert Kiyosaki. That's a, that's a great book to read. The Ultimate Gift, that's a another book. Of course, I wrote a book called Passion for Possibilities and published that, and I'd like to give that away. Uh, Napoleon Hill, mm -hmm. uh, Think and Grow Rich. I think, you know, it's a mindset thing, and uh, that's a great book. Uh, he interviewed Edison, Carnegie, mm -hmm. Ford, and the common denominators of what made all them successful. I think we can learn from other people's success. And uh, I'm really big at learning. I, 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 the more I learn, it keeps me motivated. So I, I think that's, that's really important. Yeah, absolutely. All right, this is my favorite question. I, I, I got to say, I'll, I'll just preface this. Tell us one thing that most people don't know about you, Jose. I would say my parents being deaf, uh, from where I started, we lived on food stamps. Uh, I had a 1967 Chevy Impala. Mm. Paid my way through school. Legal guardian, my little brother and little sister. Interpreting for my parents. Lived in a small, painfully one-bedroom apartment. Uh, going to college. And for good measure, I decided to join a fraternity. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> one of my fraternity brothers nominated me to be the president of the local chapter. And uh, he had a four-car garage from Highland Park in Dallas. 
Datsun 280ZX, sports cars of all sports cars. Mm -hmm. And Tanny had a two-bedroom apartment, didn't have to work, always had a lot of cash in his pocket. His tuition was paid for in full. And I'll never forget, as when they nominated me to be president of the fraternity, when he announced, you know, the next president of Sigma Phi Epsilon fraternity, Jose Feliciano, everything went quiet. And at that moment, I was so happy, and there was a lot of serious stuff in my life that I didn't really understand until that moment is what my dad had been telling me all those years. Stop worrying about what everybody else thinks. Mm. Just be the best you can be. And so I like to pass that on others, and I take just be with me everywhere I go. Yeah, that that's that's fantastic. Love that. All right, we spoke about the pandemic and COVID and stuff that's been going on recently uh, just a few minutes ago. And people can really lose focus. People can really just kind of sink into some despair, if you will, uh, with everything that's going on in the world. What is your mantra, motto, or something that you say to yourself to help you stay focused or get you back on track or just kind of lift your spirits? Well, I tell you, I think all of us sometimes chase success. And we start to realize that the things we were chasing is not really important to us. And when you have a situation like this where... You have a complete shutdown. I think it caused all of us to reevaluate, rethink what's really important in our lives. And I bet there's been a lot of families that got connected. I know our family did. Uh, we had to find things that to do that, you know, I think it's a plus. Uh, I think, you know, every time there's the place of my biggest challenge is always the source of my greatest strength. I've learned that from my parents. And, and I think that that's where we're at. And People are starting to find themselves and make, you know, maybe change careers or, or change habits uh, from what they were doing. But I think everybody had a reset as far as looking at themselves. I know I did for me. It just makes me really appreciate with gratitude uh, of everything that I do have and uh, been a blessed, very blessed man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do like to share my blessings with others and. And my motto is to go big, just be in gratitude every day. Nice. Well, so if you had to name one, what is your proudest achievement? Uh, my proudest achievement, I would say I love helping others. I look at our job as ministering to others. Mm -hmm. And uh, we help everybody grow, we grow. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Helping people live life on purpose and sharing what I've learned and experienced in my life with others. But I also learn from others what they've experienced. And we all have our challenges. And I would say my family is so important to me. Uh, we came to, from New York City to Jacksonville, Texas, with three boxes to our name on Trailways bus. Mm. So all we have, we don't have stuff and things. We have each other, and I think you can't get any better than that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Jose, I appreciate your time today. I have one last question for you, but... Um, I, I want to thank you for being so open and, and sharing the personal stuff with us and also giving us a kind of a glimpse of your history. Now you have the attention of a lot of people that, that are going to be listening to this podcast. Who should be listening to this podcast? And then can you give us a, a bit of a sneak preview of what's coming up on future episodes? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull every division that we have in our company and really cover common mistakes that people make mm -hmm. and what to think about and the podcast was very important to me to be able to share with others, whether they do business with us or not. What's important to me is people can learn from, from what we have learned. Mm -hmm. And I think shared knowledge is, is very valuable. And, uh, I think instead of hoarding the information, I would like to be a resource to everybody and they'll call me when they're ready. Uh, but I do like to educate and I believe in educating and attracting people. So bottom line is we're going to, look at every aspect of financial planning and share common mistakes that people make so they can avoid them so they can live life on purpose. Perfect. That, that, that is great. Jose, again, thank you so much for your time today. You bet. Really enjoyed talking to you. So I appreciate it. Me too, Jose. I really enjoyed this. Well, the last thank you goes to you, the listening audience. Thank you for tuning in and listening to the live life on purpose podcast with Jose Feliciano. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, which I know you have it because this is the very first one. This is his inaugural podcast. Please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Jose comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thank you for listening today. For everyone at Feliciano Financial, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live life on purpose. 
Thank you for listening to Live Life on Purpose with Jose Feliciano. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Feliciano Financial Group. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.